In this lesson, I'll show you how to obtain the empirical formula from experimental data. This is part one in this series. The question reads, a compound containing nitrogen and oxygen is decomposed in the laboratory and produces 24.5 grams nitrogen and 70.0 grams oxygen. Calculate the empirical formula of the compound. What's nice about this question is that they've provided the molar mass of both nitrogen and oxygen, so we can use that to find the number of moles. Let's start with nitrogen. We have 24.5. 24.5 grams, and we'll multiply that by the flipped version of this number. So notice that it's 14.01 grams over mole. I'll change the grams so that it's at the bottom and the moles so that it's in the numerator position. So we end up with this number multiplied by one mole over 14.01 grams. And you can do that with any rate. This is considered a rate because we have one unit over the other. The reason why I'm orienting it this way is so that this grams unit and this gram unit cancel out when we multiply. Using our calculator, we have 24.5 times 1 divided by 14.01, and we get 1.74. 1 1.7, let's just say 1.75 because it was followed by an 8. Let's do the same thing for oxygen. We have 70.0 grams times one mole over 16.00 grams. Once again, the grams unit cancel out, which is what we want, and we end up with moles. And how many moles is that? Well, we'll use our calculator, 70 divided by 16. No need to multiply by one, it gives you the same thing. And that gives me 4.37. And we'll just round to eight, 4.38. 4.38. So we have a chemical that consists of nitrogen, oxygen, so I'll write down NO, and we have 1.75 of nitrogen and 4.38 of oxygen, moles. Now if we want to reduce this, I'll take the smaller of the two and divide the subscripts by that number. So I'll take 1.75 divided by 1.75, and this divided by 1.75, this cancels out, becomes a one. So we have NO, we don't need to write the one, and over here we have 4.38 divided by 1.75. That gives me roughly 2.5, oh, 2.5. Now, if we want to make this so that we don't have any decimal numbers and only integers, what you want to do is multiply the N and the O with a number that will make it an integer. So if I multiply this one by two and this 2.5 by two, this becomes a five and this becomes a two. Therefore, our empirical formula is N2O5. Now the reason why I knew I had to multiply by two is because I know 2.5 is five over two as a fraction. And if you know that, that's a good thing because you now know what to multiply the fraction by to get rid of this denominator. If I multiply this by two, this denominator goes away. And given that this number was previously a one, we don't have to worry about finding the lowest common denominator here. This will do. So our answer is N2O5, and the chemical compound here is dinitrogen pentoxide. Let's move on to question two. A sample of a compound is decomposed in the laboratory and produces 165 grams of carbon, 27.8 grams of hydrogen, and 220.2 grams of oxygen. Calculate the empirical formula for the compound. Starting with carbon, I have 165 grams. I'll multiply that by its molar mass. One mole over 12.01. I'll worry about the calculation later. I'll set up the next calculation, 27.8 times one mole over, and this is hydrogen, so we'll use 1.008 grams at the bottom, and finally, 220.2 grams times one mole at the top, and at the bottom we'll have 16.00 grams. Grams unit all cancel out, leaving us only with moles. Let's see what we get. Using our calculator for the first one, we have 165 divided by 12.01, 13.7, seven works, 13.7 moles. Over here we have 
27.8 divided by approximately 1. This gives me 27.5, 27.5 moles. And lastly, 220.2 divided by 16. That gives me roughly 13.8, 13.8 moles. So I'll write down C, H, and O. Starting with carbon, we have 13.7. Hydrogen, we had 27.5. And oxygen, we had 13.8. The smallest of these numbers is 13.7, but it is very close to the amount of oxygen. So both of these, if I divide them by 13.7, this becomes a 1. This becomes a 1. And let's see what happens when we divide 27.5 by 13.7. As suspected, I would get a number close to 2. So our chemical compound here has a chemical formula of CH2O. And there you have it, two examples on how to obtain the empirical formula from experimental data. Make sure to watch part 2 for some more interesting examples.